This is a telescope. This is another telescope. This is a small telescope. This is a large telescope. This is a bunch of telescopes. This is a bunch of telescopes that work together. This is a bunch of telescopes that don't work together. This is a telescope built into the side of an airplane. This is a telescope in space. Astronomers use telescopes to look at the universe. I know this because I'm an astronomer. This is me. My name is Kevin Hainline. I'm one of the scientists working on the James Webb Space Telescope. The James Webb Space Telescope was first proposed in the early 1990s, right after the launch of the Hubble Space Telescope. The Hubble Space Telescope is still up in space, going around our planet, and has given us a new understanding of the weird inner workings of the universe. It's perhaps the most famous telescope of all time. There are Hubble images everywhere. It's been on TV shows and in movies. People even print Hubble images on their clothing. The James Webb Space Telescope is Hubble's bigger cousin. So JWST will replace Hubble? No, they'll work together at the same time, sometimes looking at the same parts of the universe. So what makes them different? Very good question. There's a lot of differences. For instance, one's bigger. The mirror of the Hubble Space Telescope is eight feet across. It's pretty big. It's a little bit taller than Shaquille O'Neal. This is the mirror of the James Webb Space Telescope. It's 21.3 feet across. That's more than three Shaquille O'Neals. That's almost four refrigerators. That's as tall as an adult giraffe. That's six R2-D2 stacked on top of each other. That's the size of George Washington's nose on Mount Rushmore. That's a big nose. Yep. Because of the differences in sizes, the mirror on the James Webb Space Telescope can capture over six times the amount of light as the Hubble Space Telescope. Here's a model of the James Webb Space Telescope. This is the primary mirror. This is the secondary mirror. This is the sun shield. This is the aft optic subsystem. This is the integrated science module where the cameras live. And this is a door. This door leads to my boss, Dr. Marsha Riki. Marsha Riki. Marsha is the chief scientist for one of the cameras on board the James Webb Space Telescope. This camera is called NearCam. NearCam is about this big. That's a big camera. But that's not the only camera on the James Webb Space Telescope. There are actually four separate cameras living on the telescope. Near Cam, Near Spec, Nearis, and Miri. They were all designed to do different things. Here is how light moves through the James Webb Space Telescope to get to those instruments. It goes like this. Space, primary mirror, secondary mirror, aft optic subsystem, cameras. The cameras are all nestled together behind the mirror, waiting to get that sweet, sweet space light. What type of space light is JWST going to observe? I'm glad you asked. The James Webb Space Telescope was designed to see infrared light. We need a light break to talk about infrared. Light break! Here's the spectrum of light that human beings can see. You might be familiar. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, Violet, classics. But there's a whole assortment of colors that our eyes can't see, with wavelengths that are too short or too long. And because these colors are invisible to us, they didn't get super fancy names like Rounge or uh, Flurple or Quibips. For light that has a wavelength that's just longer than the light we can see with our eyes, just longer than red, we call it infrared. It's the next color beyond red, and it lets us see secrets. For instance, right now, your skin is glowing in infrared light and your eyes can't see it. In space, there's so much that can be learned by looking at infrared light. That's why the James Webb Space Telescope mirrors are covered in gold. Gold reflects infrared light really well. Gold also makes the telescope look profoundly epic. And by looking at the universe in infrared light, we can see weird new things in the universe. For instance, we can use infrared light to see through space dust. Space is filled with dust, and it's pretty much like smoke. This space smoke gets in the way of things we might want to look at. This is a picture of the Andromeda galaxy in optical light, like what we can see with our eyes. Here's Andromeda, but seen in the infrared. Optical. Infrared. Optical. Infrared. You can see through the dust! There are so many stars! Here's a star-forming region in the Milky Way, as seen in the optical. And here's the same region in the infrared. Very cool. But that's not all the infrared is helpful for. The farthest galaxies can only be seen in infrared light because their optical light has been redshifted due to the expansion of the universe. 
Hubble can't see as much of the infrared as the James Webb Space Telescope can, and so it can't see these galaxies. The two telescopes are going to work together then and find the most exciting, weird, faint, irregular, dustiest, and distant galaxies in the universe. And there's more! This is Thomas Beatty. He's planning on using the James Webb Space Telescope to look at planets outside our solar system. Well, I work at longer wavelengths in the infrared, um, and we're gonna use that to try and look at the planet's atmospheres. That's right, clouds on other planets. What their weather is like and uh, what they're made out of. Yeah, Thomas, and why? There's a, a chance we're gonna see something that looks like life. Aliens? Possible alien life. Thomas is my office mate. This is Thomas's side of the office. This is my side of the office. My side is more exciting. Thomas and I work on NearCam together. Designing and building a super sensitive infrared space camera is very hard. To detect infrared light, NearCam has to use a substance called Mercury Cadmium Telluride. Mercury Cadmium Telluride. It's a crystal. Here's my coworker Jared, who works on the detector. I'm the NearCam detector wizard. Wizard! He knows the term for how we make this crystal. Molecular beam epitaxy. This is a very fancy way to say we have to grow these crystals. And when they're grown, and we expose them to infrared light, the crystals produce electricity. The cameras on JWST will turn infrared light from the universe into electrical signals we can read. And these cameras were made by people, pretty much by hand. Here's one of these people. This is Ken Don, an engineer who did a bunch of the wiring on NearCam himself. He had to be very careful, and it was very hard, but now this thing he worked on is going into space. Great job, Ken. There's another thing about these detectors that you should really know. They have to be really cold to work. Otherwise, the cameras will glow brighter than the galaxies we're trying to look at. The James Webb Space Telescope will be in space, where it's generally pretty cold, but it's still gonna have to go one million miles away from the Earth on the other side of the moon, and even then, it will have to use this big parasol called a sun shield to block the light from the sun and the Earth. Only here will it be cold enough. Very cold. Negative 233 degrees Celsius cold. Negative 388 degrees Fahrenheit cold. To get here, the telescope has to be folded up like an origami crane to fit inside of a rocket. Then it has to survive the launch, make it to space, and slowly unfold and open up all by itself. It's gonna take a month for all these parts to unfold. It sounds really complicated. It is. But if it weren't hard, if it weren't a little terrifying, then it would have already been done. Listen, science is hard. Engineering is hard. It's difficult to figure out how to build an incredibly sensitive infrared detector that you have to cram together on the back of a giant foldable gold-covered mirror sitting on a delicate tennis court-sized parasol that can survive a rocket launch. It's hard stuff. And hundreds and hundreds of people around the world have been working on it together. JWST is the single most complicated science project human beings have ever attempted but it's been worth it because we want to discover the earliest galaxies in the universe and clouds on other planets and baby star forming regions and debris disks around stars and weird dwarf galaxies and supermassive black holes. It's been in development for almost 30 years and everyone is really ready for it. The James Webb Space Telescope is about to change astronomy. Get ready for discovery. <laughs>